Hey, what's up guys? Look, it's Tristan here, back again with some Crash League videos, uh, draft games, however you want to say it. I am very much out of the groove right now, um, to kind of explain, over the last course I would say about a month, maybe three weeks to a month, I've been having a lot of personal issues going on, don't want to get into that really, but it's caused me to, uh, I stepped back from my main leagues for a bit, I stepped back from Crash for a little bit, like for about two weeks. I took a two week period off the Crash, IPA, and some other leagues I was in. But um, other than that, like, I, it's all fixed now. Um, I'm, or it's getting better. It's, it's not gonna stop me. I feel I should get into the groove of game recording again because I do enjoy recording. So nonetheless, I'm gonna stop rambling here. But um, this is my week six game. I played it before everything happened but I didn't record it I also did with my week 7 game because those two happened on the same day but um nonetheless week 6 of crash is here and so uh, looking at it this was against honor and I don't remember what his team name is um, but me versus honor here uh, I'm not going to do a team builder because there's like, it would be such a long video. I th feel if I need, if I'm going to get back into it, then I should just, uh, I should take it slow at this point. And I feel that I should just probably try to get these battles out as soon as possible. So I know that I'm really late on the uploads, but I feel that I should probably pair my week six and seven together and then hopefully be able to be good on the rest of that. Uh, I will say my update with this. Um, we, I played week six and seven. It's going to be in this video. I'm going to record that today. And then uh, week eight was when I took my break, and when I pulled back. And my friend Jarrett, uh, Pokemon Jarrett Bear HP, he went and he played my week eight for me. Uh, he was a great sub. He got me that win. Uh, I'll link that in the description below. I'll link his channel and him in this description below. Then week nine, I end up getting a forfeit one anyway. Versus Tamer, I believe his name was, or I believe the coach was. Um, it, I wasn't supposed. I wasn't playing that game anyway. That was going to be Jarrett's second sub game for me. But and uh, things end up happening, and I got a forfeit one anyway. So I missed like or I didn't miss, but. Uh, there's a stretch between like four games that that nobody knows of right now. So I'm doing my week six and seven today. You'll see, or in this video, you'll see what that's going to be. And then week eight, I got week eight and nine. I got a win week eight. Jared sub for me week nine. Um, week nine, I got a forfeit win, I believe. And now it's week 10 and I'm facing Coach Oak, I believe is the person I'm facing this week, but that's scheduled for some, that's scheduled for down the week, so I'm going to do that later. Uh, so, back to topic at hand, week six versus honor here. Um, doing a kind of quick little recap of my team, so, so I can just jump into it. Uh, Zygarde, it was a more defensive Zygarde with sub camouflage Dragon Dance Thousand Arrows, and that was specifically to take Advantage of Alamomola and a Scarf of Manitan. And depending on the Zapdos, I could have taken advantage of that. <laughs> and the Spin Rack that came, I could have taken advantage of that. But, um, and he had a Jirachi as well. So I made my set so that I didn't get um, hurt by a. Or it, the sub didn't break to a defensive Jirachi. Uh, it didn't really take into a matter of. Uh, or I didn't take it in the matter of a special Jirachi, which I believe actually could have made a difference in this game because I didn't prep for a special Jirachi at all. Uh, I didn't realize that until later in the team building. But um, but yeah, so when I had the Thousand Arrows to hit Mons like Zapdos and Tyranitar and Jirachi, but I, I don't know. I, I'm iffy. I, sh I feel like I kind of should have brought a, uh, the E speed over Thousand Arrows, but I don't necessarily tune, I don't completely disagree with Thousand Arrows, but it, 
it shows that it didn't help that much. Uh, Uxi is my favorite set ever. This is a uh, fully physically offensive Uxi with a with the Salic Berry, and but the Salic Berry isn't going to be used to add my speed. The Salic Berry is going to be used as natural gift fodder for or base 100 attack um, fighting to hit the Tyranitar. It also has uh, hidden. Not hidden power, but ice punch. It has knock off and toxic for the Alamomola. Uh, Prim Plup was defensive. It was for a Landorus Eye that didn't come. Um, just basic Scald, Ice Beam, Toxic, Stealth Ox, I believe. Um, it was basically for Landorus. It could have handled. Uh, it could have handled Darmanitan to a point, but it was almost a non-mon to anything else on the team. Uh, Latios here we have physically offensive Latios DD uh, Dragonium Z with Outrage Earthquake and Ice Beam as to make sure that I don't if he's an AV Titar that I don't get trapped by it because I I I guess I did a more offensive build with my team so I know that I don't have switchings to a Titar so I want uh, instead of getting pursuit trapped I would rather take as much damage as I could get on it um, other than that it was just Latios was just here to make dense team the team uh, hopefully um, then we go other than that it just did its job like the plan almost with my team was to make the right switches and if there's a threat that's in just stay in and try to take it on even if it doesn't work because I could switch and I could come in with something that's a better fit to revenge it. Um, but yeah, so moving on, Nine Tails, Purple Snowbell, we have it was Life Orb with Freeze Dry, Ice Shard, um, I forget, Hidden Power Ground, and Moonblast, I believe. Uh, I think those are worth the four I had. I I shard, I also had like 64 attack EVs for stuff like Mega Septile and Landorus Eye. Uh, Landorus Eye is Sand Force to add to that, but he didn't bring it, so it would be for basically Septile and um, Zapdos if really needed. The, other than that, it didn't really matter. Um, and then Schizor here, we had our bulky offensive Schizor, max HP, max off, or max attack. Adamant with Life Orb, and it was Knock Off, uh, Bullet Punch, uh, Roost, and Toxic, because I wanted to try to make sure that I could uh, catch Alamomola on any kind of switching onto my Skizor, and that I don't exactly lose to it, because I don't, if I, because I have a lot of physically offensive threats, and Alamomola can just take those all day. So that was basically it. That's the gist of my team here. Uh, so when I look at this team, I was happy that there's no Chirachi. I was happy there was no Landers Eye. Um, I was surprised that there was this Spinarak. I don't know what it was going to do. I was scared. He brought his meme pick. I brought my meme pick. That's pretty cool. Um, so I didn't know what was going to go on. But nonetheless, I looked at it. And I felt that I had the matchup with about four of the mons or so like the, these first four I would have had the right I would have just clicked a move because I'm offensive and I want I want to uh, find stuff out and if Darmanitan was in I wanted to see what item it was I was also like it also covered a uh, spin rack coming in because I don't think it would have been able to do much to a uh, nine tails so just gain of the game I lead my uh, nine tails my purple snowbell and he leads his Zapdos, I'm just gonna freeze dry here, and I get a, I get a crit turn one, and so that's always nice. Uh, this crit didn't matter. Uh, I did not kill a defensive Zapdos with freeze dry. If I had Blizzard, I probably would have. I might have not, but nonetheless, it was a crit. On top of that, it was a high roll crit. Like it was, it wasn't too big of a high roll, but it was like, it was like a 516 roll, I would say, if I remember the calc correctly, and so. Turn one, starting off with a bang. Purple Snowbell doing her job. Uh, so that's basically it. Now we see the Darmanitan come in, and my basically my thoughts here was if it's Scarf, if it's Scarf, I, and I thought he would go for U-turn because he didn't want my other threat to get in. Um, 
and if I would figure out he would be Scholar, I thought that he would go for U-Turk, but no, he just decides to take out <laughs> take out my Nine Tails right away. So he gets the damage on it. He gets the damage on himself. He gets, takes the hail damage. I find this a perfect time to go into my Zygarde, and I'm gonna just predict here. I'm gonna go for a sub predicting on Mola, and. This is the perfect time I was thinking, okay, I could go for my, um, I could go for camouflage. I could put him to work with my actual set. He goes, he makes a good play. He just doubles right into his, uh, set pile here. And we see that I didn't do anything. And so basically I'm a, I don't even have the stab anymore to go with my thousand arrows and I'm gonna be hitting a mega set pile. It's gonna be almost nothing. So he's and so that's why I think that E speed probably would have been better on my set instead of um instead of thousand arrows. But nonetheless I just went for damage because I didn't want to waste a sub. So he went for Dragon Pulse and then I'm just gonna switch into Print Club since it doesn't really have a use in my mind. So he went for he made I don't know if it would be a prediction but he made the good middle ground play into print or for giga drain onto print club and he just decides it to k to a ko it and that's perfectly fine i'm gonna go into my Uxie. he probably thinks something's up he thinks i have an ice punch so he's gonna go into his tyranitar and that's perfectly fine um i get the ice punch crit and uh to our and this is that time i'm gonna pull the trigger and i hit him with the natural gift and the tyranitar is gonna go down uh, to kind of further along with the that crit there kind of mattered it kind of didn't matter as well it, I had a roll uh, if he was just if he was like max or if he was just regular t tar then it was a roll for me to uh, knock him out with a uh, with a I or well, not with an ice punch but with a natural gift and then the crit just made it like it was a it went from like a eight. It went from like a I don't know, like a four sixteen to a like a two, or to like a, a fourteen sixteen roll. So the roll, the rolls went into like it, the crit made the roll for the natural gift go further into my favor. So with that, uh, time Manitar's down. That's good. I don't have to worry about it. Uh, I predict him to U-turn here and go for I go for toxic, but he, no. I, the story of this game is with this Dark Manitan is I I thought that he would U turn and that he just didn't. He just went for damage. And I don't blame him. That's okay. He was trying to, I think he was trying to open up for his Mega Sceptile, and that's perfectly a good idea. I went for Toxic trying to catch either Alomomola or the Sceptile. So, um, yeah, no, that's, it's just not what happened. So he went for. Flare Blitz, he's gonna go for Flare Blitz here, and I must, uh, I'm gonna take this time, I thought about my play, I could've gone into Skizor, but I didn't, I thought my play was to go into Latios, I could take a Flare Blitz, and I would DD up, and then I could take it out, or I could take out almost whatever was in here, uh, I had good bulk, a good, a, a good amount of uh, EVs on my, um, I had a good amount of EVs on my Latios, so it like it was a roll if he had Ice Beam, and he could he might be able to take out, but it wasn't confirmed. But then like I was looking at him like if he has Knock Off, then it would definitely kill. So I was thinking I could go for two DDs, or I could go for the uh, Devastating Drake with the Outrage and do I believe the roll was like 60% to this, but. As we'll see here, that is not what happens. I misclick because I have two dragon moves right next to each other. And I ZDD. And that wasn't the play. <laughs> like, there's a misclick, but it, it cost me a lot of health on this fish. So it, it made it a lot more annoying. So I have to basically try to finesse my way with it to go out. Um, basically, what I was thinking here was. Alamola can't break the sub, so sub, I could try something. Other than that, I know Skizor needs to put in the work for the rest of the match, basically. Uh, but first thing was first, I need a chip on it, on this Sceptile. So basically, 
what I needed to do was I sub. I needed to make sure that he wasted a turn to basically take out the, the sub and then my Zygarde so I could get some chip on it. Uh, we'll see here that, or we saw before, and we see here that the Thousand Arrows does about 28% or so, I believe, or 29, depending on how you look at it. Um, and with that, it actually put it in a roll. Um, the Zygarde doing that, it did enough because it put the bullet punch from my scissor to make it a roll. And being Skizzy Stardust, being Skizzy Darcy Stardust, uh, it ended up uh, working out perfectly fine. And at this point right here, uh, it, it what like so that was definitely the roll. And Skizzy Stardust got it. This game was up about a lot of rolls, and apparently I was getting them. So basically. I started freaking out when he sent this in. I was like, "What? What is this? What's going on? Does it like? It does this get a good fire move? Does it like? How much does HP fire from this do to me?" I was freaking out over this game. I was freaking out over what a um, over what the spin rack would do to me. So, but I when I looked at the calcs, I spent <laughs> I spent like five minutes looking at calcs and moves that spin rack got. Because I end up getting genuinely worried about this uh, little spider but I, I saw that it didn't do too much to me so I could just go ahead and bullet punch through and I find out here that he goes for the lunch so he wants to make sure that I don't get to like I don't have to I don't do much to Alamomola but that doesn't matter I get the two bullet punch I get the Skizzy Stardust gets the spinner act kill and with Alamola, I would be able to get the toxic off except I miss here and then he goes for a wish and then I'm like okay just toxic again but he has the lumberry and so I'm just sitting here he goes for a skull I sit here I'm like he's like I can't get a toxic off but I also have roost and so I think that I'm able to uh, I'm still I think this game is in the bag at this point because I could get a toxic off as long as this uh, fish doesn't have rest or refresh, I believe, I believe it gets refreshed. So if it if it doesn't get ha if it doesn't have one of those two moves, I'm pretty confident that I can uh, just toxic and roost all it out. It takes a couple turns for me to uh, finally be able to get the toxic off, and that like that ba that's basically it. Like I'm gonna put the uh, the play on fast now and we just see it's a lot of it's basically a stall at the end of the game and so that, that yeah no uh, like yeah just it just took a while like the, it was a couple turn stall nonetheless but skizzy stardust finished the game with three kills which was amazing of it i couldn't ask for it to do more um yeah there was a few things that happened that mattered a lot like the crit on Zapdos, the crit on Tyranitar partially mattered. I got a high roll with um, with Bullet Punch on the subtitle, I believe. And then there's the, when I DD'd and Z DD'd with my Latios instead of just Z outraging. That really put a dent in what I could do. And so with that... Um, Really nothing else to play, or nothing else to say. I think that I made the plays I needed to do to win this game. Um, Skizzy Stardust making uh, making a name for itself, getting another three kills. And with this, my record goes from, or my record ended up at four and two with a minus one differential. And I now have 12 points. So all my wins so far in the Crash League have been uh, have been one of those and so I want to change that I need to be able to catch up to people and my differential being negative one with four wins isn't impressive I I feel I need to pr do something to prove a little more um, having a one only makes my diff my points be at 12 and I had people at like or I had other guys that were ahead of me they were at like 17 or they were at like 14 17 like between that range because they were getting four o's or more 
and so I was like, I need to make sure I could do that. And so that's basically it. Um, my, I'll, I'm gonna make a jump cut here. I'm gonna go from here. I'll move on to my week seven game against uh, Bash and his New York Muse, I believe. Uh, he was one of the top teams in the league, so I'll see you there. Seven of Crash League here versus Bash, uh, New York Muse. Uh, we see here that I, or he brought a Dawn fan, Gardevoir, this is a Mega, Lorantis, Celesteela, Nihiligo, and Jolteon. Uh, something with his team that I was very scared about when I was um, looking into prepping for this is that he has a Koma O on his team. And not only is it a scary Mon, but he's made it 10 times scarier with how he's played it. I believe when we had the battle, it was the top Mon in kills. So that was definitely a threat when I was considering prep. Um, I thought that maybe he would put Koma O instead of Nihiligo because I thought I had a few good answers like I don't I didn't think it was gonna be a choice locked or anyway but I still felt I had the answers with Latios Uxie could uh, could fall a little bit scissor schizor just comes in and it doesn't want to stay in whatsoever even with the berry berry um, nine tails can be in, or hidden power ground side shock I I don't know if it's side shock I forget it's been a while uh, even like if I the type of um, the type of blazing can I brought it could have taken a hit from the hill ago. I like I could have made my team to fit against the hill go pretty well. I think that I did that pretty well actually. Um, I, so I don't think the hill ago was the greatest spring, but he did, so he brought it anyway. Uh, so no come out basically is good for me. I don't have to deal with a huge threat. Uh, he's, I know he's played his Jolteon well, I don't think he, like, from what I know, he doesn't like to choice lock that, he likes to run zap most of the time, so his electric moves are going to be having a little bit more, uh, a little bit more power, uh, he'll be, be like, either zap play or maybe expert belt, so if he has HP guys, he could hit my, uh, Zygarde for super effective, plus more, and... I believe with Expert Belt, it knocks out my Zygarde a lot of the time, depending on the set. So yeah, no, Jolteon's a big threat here because I don't have basically the right walls for it. Um, Celesteela's a threat, I never, <laughs> I always hate facing a Celesteela. Uh, May Gardevoir's always a threat with base 165 special attack. I see here, it's like, I don't have good switch-ins, I like, Skizor's not a switch-in, that's my steel type, that's my parry resist. It's, it doesn't switch in well, and it just needs a uh, hidden power fire prediction to take it out, and I lose a huge win con in the game. Uh, Dawn fan, I wasn't too worried. I had Aurora Veil. I had uh, my uh, Nine Tails here. I had my Latios. I wasn't too worried, but it was something that I figured it can be a threat, or at least the upper oxy could be a nuisance to me. Uh, Lorantis, I figured, like, it might come, but the only role it would literally have if it came was to wall, or not wall, but it would be to take a hit from Zygarde, and so that's basically, like, he had a bunch of other mods on his team, I can't remember his full team, I'm, not, I'm just not looking at the dock, I'd rather, I'm not going too in depth, I just want to get these games in and out, um, so I'm, ca I'm caught up on all my games, but, uh, going back, for my team here, I brought the Blaziken, Zygarde, Latios, Scizor, um, Uxie, and the Loma Ninetales. So with this, um, my Blaziken set was Assault Vest with Max Attack Adamant, and I believe enough speed to outspeed a Celesteela, because his team was in a range where it's like, Blaziken didn't have to run Max Speed or Max B. Jolly to outspeed some of the threats here because I believe his like closest thing to my Blaziken was the Celsiela and above that was the Chroma O which didn't come. So and if it came it probably wouldn't have tried to he probably I think he would have played it safe with the speed creep and kept it to a minimum of outspeeding the Blaziken. So 
I made my plays again have a little more, more bulk with uh, make it as hard hitting as possible without a boosting item. So I believe I had Flare Blitz, uh, Brave Bird, High Jump, and Earthquake was my fourth four moves for the set. I just I wanted to hit hard. I wanted to try to eat hit from Salcila if I needed to. Uh, same thing with Gardevoir if you believe that Hyper Voice was always going to be the move and want to try to predict something. It's like if you want to go for Hyper Voice, uh, trying to catch my Latios instead of a, a Psychic Stab, that's perfectly fine. So that's, that was basically that. Uh, my Zygarde was mostly kind of a regular set. It was a um, max speed, max attack with 1000 arrows, outrage, dragon dance, and speed, I believe. I believe that was my set, and I had a Roselli Berry in case, uh, I had a Roselli Berry in case he wanted, in case I could have, uh, eaten a hit from Mega Gardevoir and taken it out, I, and with that, like, the roll, I, I needed my Zygarde to be very healthy, um, so that, that was basically it, <laughs> I, yeah, it was basically for, um, Mega Gardevoir, I believe it, it could have been for Nihiligo too, because it has Dazzling Link. But most likely Nihiligo is going to have either Hidden Power, Ice, or Fire. Probably Ice because it outspeeds my Zygarde and it would be able to hit it. But like if I, with HP Fire, he could have predicted my Scizor to not go for Bullet Punch whenever this was in and take me out, especially if it was Berry Berry. So there's that. Uh, it was just really trying to hit hard. I That's kind of my... Uh, presence with the team I have I figured out recently it's like my team it I feel I have to be very offensive with it and I do have some support mods here but other than that it's not the biggest deal I'm not gonna it's like it's just there I'm gonna try to do what I can I try to improvise where it could um, looking here we have Latios the first time ever I, I'm bringing a, a regular Ladio set. This is a special set with Dragonium Z, Draco Me Meteor, Thunderbolt. Um, what else do they have? They have Psych Shock, I believe, or Psych Kick, and um, I forget the last move. It was either Roost or um, Ice Beam, I believe. What? Well, yeah, it was that or Ice Beam. So uh, I just had four moves. Dragon Z, try to hit as hard as I can. Uh, basically, that's about it. Uh, same, or sp enough speed to outspeed Gardevoir, because I forgot Nihiligo was a thing, and I forgot its speed tier is above Gardevoir. So, if it ever got down to the Latios versus Nihiligo, it would have been a very interesting game, to say the least. Um, Schizor was a very, I want to say, unique set here. Um, I ran an Aka Berry with 252 HP, 252 Max Attack Adamant. Um, the set was like Aka Berry with Bullet Punch and Aerial Lace as the attacking moves. Aerial Lace for things such as the Lorantis and the Tomo that I was expecting to come. And um, Bullet Punch for general stab, hard hitting move versus things such as Gardevoir and Nihilago. Uh, Aka Berry was for any HP fires, it was for Flamethrower from, from uh, Celesteela. I want to make sure I live those hits, uh, most specifically because my other two moves were Swords Dance and Baton Pass. So I had two different ways I could go with it. I, if I, I could have sword dan Swords Dance and then um, swept at the end of the game if I so wanted to, or what like another plan I could have swords dance and baton pass into something else that would probably more or less my Zygarde or Blaziken and just hit as hard as I could. Uh, we'll see which way that went in the game. So uh, other than that, we have Uxi. I believe it was just a regular spec set with Toxic or not maybe not Toxic. I think it was T Wave, Stealth Rock, Sidekick, and Knock Off. I believe I'm not too sure. I forget what the set was specifically. Uh, I think I might have it here. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Boom. 
IPA. That's for my friend Michael. I'll go into IPA stuff later in a different video. That's PWC when I'm doing. Uh, that, oh, okay. Well, good thing I'm gonna do the oak game before this game uh, comes up. So let's see. Where, oh, where? It, there it is. Uh, oh, poison jab. So yeah, it looks like. Uh, yeah, poison jab for the Mega Garvor makes more sense. Uh, Dazzling Gleam. I had on the Ook, you won't, you can't see it right now, um, I'm not, it, it seems, it's gonna be a little bit of struggle, but, um, let's see, I'm gonna go back to the game now, uh, oh, no, that does not look good, uh, there we go, on, or mid, uh, mid recording editing is always the best, but, uh, I had Dazzling Gleam for the Como because I did not want to be set up hotter, even though I would, um, uh, even though I have Psychic Stab, I wanted to hit it for the four times effectiveness. I had T-Wave on it to make sure uh, Autonomize, basically I wanted to make sure Autonomize um, Cell Steel didn't just destroy my life. I didn't want to make sure that a Gardevoir was slowed if I so needed it to be. Uh, I was max Spadef on this, so I could have taken a hit, hopefully. Uh, yeah, that's basically what the Uchi was. And my... Ninetales was Aurora Veil, vale, Moonblast, Sub, and Disable. Uh, this was more or less for anything that wasn't Mega Gardevoir because I wanted to take hit, or I wanted to sub up and I wanted to disable something's like main move to make sure that I could be able to go into something else that favored myself, I, I, that favored the matchup and put me in a, in a better seat. So basically, um, I, I don't know how I felt about the sub disable at the end but, um, of my crap at least. But, so nonetheless, we get into the game and I see his team. And basically, basically I look at it. it. Uh, I think he's going to, I believe, I think he's going to lead Dante. And if he has that as his first mon, I, I thought it was rocks for sure. So I believe I let off with my Ninetales. And yes, we do see that. So he led with his Jolteon, which was uh, good, I guess. He got a crit on the first turn. It as I went for my uh, as I went for my Aurora Veil. Uh, the, the Aurora Veil makes it so that the Thunderbolt doesn't um, doesn't kill my Nine Tails after. So I believe I went into my Uxie to get up my rocks. Uh, so we see that and he goes for the hidden power ice because I think he was predicting my uh, My Zygarde coming right away. So I thought I didn't do that He went for Volt Switch and I believe he's going into the Celesteela as I go for my rocks uh, Then I want as I said before I don't want to make I want to make sure that he doesn't get a Autonomize up and ruin my life. I'm just gonna T-wave it and so we see here that it's a toxic set, which leads me to believe it's more of a defensive set, and so I don't have to worry about the offensive aspect of Cell Steel that much. So I'm on a timer. I switch back into Blaziken. I know that I'm gonna be able to take a hit as he makes the prediction and on me making a double, which is good. It, like I knew Bash was gonna be able to make this kind of plays. He's an amazing player. Player. So I double out. Uh, I'm gonna pause here. I double out predicting his uh either his Lorantis or or his Don fan and I, I guess he just sacked his Jolteon here I I didn't really understand that but I guess like he sacks Jolteon and it gives him the uh switch into Don fan or later Gardevoir and so I get that I got that now but uh, as we see, I didn't mention this, but I have a uh, light clay. So he made that. That's a good play on him. Uh, I saw I have to double back up into Uxie uh, to take the hidden power ice. Uh, my basically, what I want to do now is I want to chip this thing as much as possible because Uxie isn't going to do much for me. Uh, so Thunderbolt into no Aurora Veil Thunderbolt plus Toxic is going to kill my Uxie. And I think I'm gonna take this chance or take the opportunity to go, or it was HP Ice rather, but I'm gonna take this opportunity to 
and I'm going to go into my Zygarde, and I'm going to E-Speed. And because I knew it was a roll, I didn't want to risk it. I, I wanted him to think maybe I was uh, banded because the roll was either way, and I didn't really care if he went into anything else. Now he goes into his Lurantis, as basically anyone would. And I go into my Blaziken. He goes for a Defog, so he wanted to make sure those rocks aren't staying on this field. And on his side of the field. And so that's a good prediction on his part. Now I just have free reign. I could player blitz anything I want because uh, I want to get max damage on anything. Uh, making sure break on fan sturdy is going to be amazing here. Um, so hopefully, I don't believe it was a two hit fail, but. It just damage on Donfan is amazing for my end game uh, because I don't have to worry about a sturdy in the near future. So I'm just gonna flare blitz here. He doesn't know what I am, so I flare blitz and by this damage, <laughs> I know I max attack adamant, but that didn't like that barely is a two hit KO, and I know that's not defensive. That's like no, I don't think it's HP invested, I, and I don't think it's defense invested. That is a uh, nice and offensive uh, Dawn fan set right here. So hope he, I guess he was trying to catch me on that. But I see no reason not to just stay in. I take the Toxic Damage. I'm just going to Flare Blitz again. Because I now I just take out his biggest, uh, his second biggest physical defense wall, basically. And so now he goes into his, he goes into his Nihiligo. And as I look at it right now, uh, I felt confident with what I had left with my Latios and my Zygarde that I could take out threats such as Lorantis and um, Celestila. So I didn't need that. So I felt it was fine to just lose my uh, to lose my Blazing here. So I would let it go down. I figured this is a perfect time that I can go into my Skizor and even so I have the Octaberry and my basic thought here was I don't think he wants to stay in uh, he didn't know if I was Scarf or anything so he I think he went in as a choice Scarf set which means that he's locked into this so thinking that he's a choice Scarf set here um, I decide to go for the Swords Dance even if he wasn't I believe I lived in HP Fire I believe the calc was very, I lose a lot of damage, or I lose a lot of health, but I believe I lived the hidden power of fire. Um, and even then, like, I was able to out, or I'm not, it, I could do a bullet punch and I don't think he would want to lose it for his, for the possibility for uh, being able to clean up Latios and uh, Latios with Nine Tails, and if enough chip happens, then Zygarde could end up uh, being cleaned up by this as well. So I, I go for the Sword Dance thinking that he's going to switch out. And that's what happens. And so with Celestia in, I'm not scared. I take a Flamethrower if possible. So I just Sword Dance it again. And I he Air Slashes. He gets a crate here, which in the long run, I guess it would have helped save health on me. But um, I wasn't fearing the flamethrower as i said i had akaberry i was faster than this i was going to be able to get to plus four and i could compass out into my zygarde which were which is the plan right now um so that's basically it uh, i guess he doesn't have a flamethrower coverage i guess he has toxic with um with air slash is all i know right now so i take this time i'm gonna baton pass out into my zygarde here and this is a perfect time. He air slashes. It does almost nothing. It does 25%. I chew it. So I'm just going to go for a thousand arrows. He gets smacked down. And then I'm he goes for hidden power ice. And it does nothing. And so I'm going to take this time to go for the thousand arrows again. And my I'm going to predict that. Or I don't. I'm not going to predict. But. Uh, he brings in his Lorantis here, and with that, uh, I have a couple options. I could have E speed in, uh, or I could have. Um, he had a couple options, rather. Um, he could have gone into his Nihiligo and 
used any move, but if he did that, then Skizor just came in and, and the swap from there. I feel I have this game in the 100% bag right now. So, uh, uh, so basically, I it's who do I want to distribute the kills to? And so I know I have E speed, and E speed does not kill this um, this Lorantis whatsoever. Uh, then um, E speed doesn't kill, but Outrage does. And so kind of my, my biggest uh, concern, I I kind of misplayed here. If if I tried to go with everything goes. If everything goes wrong, he has the perfect sets, then I misplayed here. But I went for Outrage, and the problem was that if he had sub on his Gardevoir, he could have gone for that. I would have been confused. I would have had to rely on a... Um, I would have had to rely on a... Uh, get out of confusion and E-Speed to break the sub. And then that would go down, and I would win the game that way, more or less of the time. Or... Um, if I didn't, then that just made the game a whole lot harder. I believe I, I might have lost the game at that point because I have Vladio that that doesn't hit the guard board too well. I believe. I if I look at my set real fast, it oh I had Shadow Ball, so I could have hit it, but I don't think it would have killed after a sub. So especially if he was if he had some investment. So basically, uh, I could have lost the game and if he had sub, and I didn't break through confusion to break the sub. It w it would have just been all bad at that point. But basically, so he traces the aura break. He turns Mega and he takes out my uh, takes out my Zygarde. But then I just take this opportunity. I go right into my Skizor and I'm able to bullet punch both his mons to death. And that's a 3-0 win for. The Venice Beach Rectinis uh, versus Bash in the New York News. This was a huge game because Bash was one of the top teams in the league. I believe it was, he was the top team in the league. So, and he's in my conference on top of that. So being able to beat the top team, team in the league, beat the top team in my conference, uh, end up is the impact of that is huge because that one adds to my playoff chances at this point because I, this is like I'm a week seven. So this adds to my playoff chances. I'm now five and two at this, at this point. I'm five and two plus two with fifteen points, I believe. And he is, I believe, he's five and two with um, five and two, and he's at like seventeen or eighteen points or so. So he's ahead of me. He's had more four -oh or more wins against against people of this of the league. So being able to beat him. Uh, helps the playoff picture helps my playoff picture at least it makes me able to try to think of a future where I'm able to get a first round buy into playoffs so I don't have to face someone at the beginning of the playoffs it would be really nice to get that playoff spot um, so yeah basically with this uh, this was a good game to bash nothing really hacksy happened there's a like two crits I believe or so but that, I don't think those really matter too much. Um, I believe that like the game was well played on my part. I believe that it went slash if me and Bash play again, that it's going to be a more intense game than it was before. I believe that it's going to be a such good tough game. Uh, I can't wait for the rematch if there is a rematch. Hopefully there is because that means we're going to be in playoffs. Maybe I hope there isn't because I don't. Maybe I don't want to play Bash. Again. Because he might beat me. He knows he knows my he knows my secrets now. I don't know if I'm gonna play Bash yet. But I know if we do play it'll be a good game. Uh, so it'll be I think it'll be even better to this. So uh, good game to bash. Um, that's basically my week seven and, or week six and seven of Bash or not Bash, but Crash League. I believe the league was named after him and Crypto, the two commissioner commissioners uh uh what a, like uh, combining their names together to make uh, crash <laughs> so being able to beat the commissioner beat the top person in the league is one of one of uh, a more uh, satisfying feelings that helps everything so week six and seven I was reported in this video 
a week eight, like I said, my friend Jarrett Pokemon Jerry Bear HD. He did my week eight. I'm not gonna post that video. I'm gonna link it in the description, link his channel in the description with everyone else. Um, well then on top of that, week nine I got a forfeit, and week ten I'm doing very soon, very pretty soon. Sure. So we'll see all that get back into uh, get back into motion. Uh, so hopefully that's just the road of me getting back into recording. Uh, week 10 will be up after this sometime soon, hopefully, uh, when that game gets done. Then uh, next, after not next, but other than that, I have IPA that I am going to be uploading. And as we saw, like, I kind of showed kind of in the, uh, I when I went for a team builder, the team builder thing, uh, to look at my set roll fast to get a, a reminder. Uh, PwC, I the thing with PwC, I when I took a break from like, uh, I effectively lost my spot. With uh, it's not it's not like a big problem or anything. I was like I wanted to, I didn't want to lose the spot, but it was the most understandable thing. I didn't want them to wait for an unknown period of time on me. I don't want there to be uh, forfeits or anything. So I gave my spot over to Pesky Skitty and. He's taking out of the team. I believe he's like 3 0 with it now. Uh, after I went 1 0 with it. So, good on him. Uh, then, a couple of weeks went by and they needed someone to take over a different team. So, I took that. So, I have a whole different team. So, the draft ramble I did on that is kind of null and void. I don't have the same team. I don't want to do a draft analysis of a new team I have. It's for draft ramble of the new team I have, rather. So other than that, I don't think PwC uh, D League is going to be uploaded unless I feel I have really good games I want to display. Um, other than that, I have IPA. It's on week four now. Uh, I didn't play my weeks one and two, and I destroyed the draft in the free uh, agency period. So I'm not going to do a draft ramble on that. So I'll just start off with my week. Three, I believe I'll start off with my week three because it was against Jarrett and I want to at least do that That was my first game and I want to have a commentary with that But then I'll do my week four I guess will be my will be my better introduction Video for IPA because I have a whole new team I'm more or less probably gonna stick with a bit of it for the remainder of the season So other than that that's my video and slash update uh, with uh crash and ipa and pwcd like other than that i hope you all have a wonderful day like sub down there whatever put the ringer on if you want to get notifications for when i do upload other than that look at me i'm sounding like a big youtuber with my what of 10 subscribers if that oh well anyway if you enjoyed the video i hope you did i know i did i'm happy to be recording again and i'll see you next time bye